When excessive length restrictions on U.S. highways were relaxed significantly in the 1970s, the need for complex steering and cabin lifting mechanisms disappeared, and little has been done in the United States since. After leading truck manufacturers have eliminated cab over truck from their plans, this has caused a lot of controversy and questions about why they stopped producing this type of car that's considered to have many advantages. Welcome to Tesla Car World. Please show your support by subscribing and ringing that bell icon. Now, let's get started with today's content. The first truck produced in the United States in 1899 utilized an under-cabin engine format. While not strictly cab over, they essentially pioneered the transportation industry. Both cab over and conventional long-nose trucks have their pros and cons. However, the reason Europe and America once favored flat-fronted cabs and diverged primarily in their road choices was largely due to legal regulations, especially those concerning the overall length of vehicles. In Europe, trucks must adhere to regulations governing the maximum overall length of combined trucks and trailers. Throughout much of the 20th century, this flat front design was popular due to length regulations. Previous regulations stipulated a maximum length of 65 feet, encompassing both the truck and the trailer. This undercabin engine design quickly became popular due to its compact size and excellent maneuverability making it ideal for both urban environments and narrower roads. The ability to easily turn and maneuver made them particularly suitable for tight spaces. This lasted from 1956 to 1976, with an additional 10 feet allowed, resulting in a maximum allowance of 75 feet. However, after a regulatory change in the late 1970s, maximum length regulations for American trucks only related to the length of the trailer, not the entire vehicle. Truck manufacturers and road transport companies began to shift toward larger long-nosed trucks. While both Europe and America once favored similar flat-fronted cabs, regulations regarding the overall length of vehicles became a decisive factor, leading to a combination of both cabin and engine design. In Europe, trucks must meet strict regulations regarding the maximum overall length of trucks and trailers, while the American trucking industry focused more on longer-nosed designs to optimize driver comfort and infrastructure. In 1982, a new law eliminated regulations for trucks in the United States. Among other things, it was determined in all states that the length limit was measured only for the trailer. The length of the tractor unit was no longer included, making long-nosed trucks in the United States more liberated. As a result, truck cabins became longer and better equipped. However, some trucks in the United States are actually flat-nosed models particularly used for city driving, for garbage collection, or package delivery, where smaller turning circles are more important than a luxurious long nose. Why are long nose trucks more popular in the U.S. market? Visibility and improved maneuverability, which is another reason they perform well in Europe, where roads are narrower. However, this isn't as significant of an issue in the U.S., where transitioning to long nose trucks allows drivers to have more sleeping space in the cabin, where they practically live in it for months on end. With a longer, wider, and lower design, it provides drivers with a driving compartment and a living space right behind the seat with various features like refrigerators, microwaves, wardrobes, and even separate bathrooms. And the overall lower cabin height makes boarding easier for them. A Tesla Semi even offers an additional two large 15-inch control screens for the entertainment system. This is less common in Europe, and due to the limited size of cab over trucks, it's been rated lower. To access the sleeping berth, a truck driver needs to stand on the truck seat and crawl over the engine placed between the seats. Whenever they need anything from the bunk, the procedure remains the same, and it's impossible to reach under the bed to grab items while sitting in the driver's seat. The increasing demand for comfort on long-haul journeys has become evident. Cab over trucks, with their limited cabin space placing drivers close to the windshield and lacking suitable personal cargo space, contradict the exhausting schedules of truck drivers who travel thousands of miles per year and sometimes spend days away from home. Longer nose trucks have provided a solution to these convenience issues, with larger cabin spaces allowing for more comfortable long-distance journeys. Furthermore, transitioning to long nose trucks has helped manufacturers relocate engines out of the cabin, reducing noise and vibration. This enables drivers to move more smoothly and quietly, improving their overall experience on the road. Moreover, in terms of maintaining cab over trucks, one needs to tidy up everything arranged on the cabin before maintenance to ensure that magazines or fast food items don't tumble when the cabin needs to be fully tilted to access the engine. Long nose trucks have helped drivers address this issue. Repairing the engine or motor in a long nose truck becomes easier. Simply need to open the frunk, flip the shields, and carry out the task. 
The design and production of long nose trucks are somewhat less complicated compared to producing cab over trucks. This is closely related to the technical challenges that designing and producing COE trucks bring. Unlike conventional truck models, engineers have to work within a more restricted space when building a COE truck. This limited space poses numerous challenges for arranging mechanical components and enhancing efficiency. Furthermore, addressing these challenges often requires significant investment from automotive companies from the initial development phase to mass production. Long nose truck models with their wider spaces are typically less complex to design and manufacture, reducing the financial burden and time for manufacturers. As a result, the popularity of COE trucks has gradually declined and fewer manufacturers are interested in developing and producing these models. Instead, they're shifting their focus to conventional truck models without facing such technical and financial challenges. Increased transport capability is certainly one of the most important features of long nose trucks. A more powerful engine typically means that the rig can carry a larger payload. And although regulations limit the length of trailers, they do not dictate the overall length of the truck. This means a truck can haul multiple trailers. Conversely, European regulations allow for a maximum trailer length, thus limiting the need for trucks capable of carrying extremely heavy loads. However, another important factor is physics. Conventional trucks have longer wheelbases, and while this affects their maneuverability and turning radius significantly, it also allows for the safe manufacture of trucks capable of carrying larger loads. Thanks to the longer wheelbase, trucks are more stable on highways and can distribute weight more effectively. Safety considerations also play a crucial role in the transition from cab over trucks to long nose trucks in Europe. Trucks are typically limited to speeds of 55 miles per hour, making driving safer on narrower roads. However, American trucks can travel much faster at speeds of 80 miles per hour or more. This raises concerns for road transport companies regarding the safety of drivers as any cab over or long nose truck could face the risk of high speed collisions. With the driver's compartment positioned farther from the point of impact, truck drivers can minimize the potential for injuries to the maximum extent. Another notable aspect to consider when comparing these two types of trucks is aerodynamics. It's one of the seemingly endless pursuits of cabin designers, a much greater challenge due to the inherent need to transform a large metal and glass sheet into a sleek and efficient horse-like structure. Globally, cab over trucks still seem to dominate the heavy truck market, accounting for about 70% of the market share. There's also a straightforward commercial reality that the highly competitive brands in Europe are all cab over designs. In the United States, after Freightliner's Argosy cab over truck retired, the only American competitor in this segment against Australia's K200 with a substantial durability is Kenworth, and all signs indicate it will persist for many years to come. During a small simulation, we found that a Daimler Actros tractor equipped with a cabin deflector and a standard trailer with a maximum height of 13 feet has a drag coefficient of 0.521. There are some ways to improve this. Adding cabin deflectors may increase weight and reduce operational efficiency. Therefore, when removing these deflectors, the drag coefficient increases by 25% to 0.651. Additionally, you might be surprised to hear that Tesla's designers claim that their Tesla Semi has the lowest drag coefficient in the electric truck market today at 0.22. The main factor aiding this impressive capability is the bullet-shaped front design. Lastly, a short wheelbase design simply isn't ideal for high-speed highway driving. While COE trucks are certainly more maneuverable and suitable for tight spaces like city driving, conventional designs are simply better for highways. Stability is crucial here, especially when carrying heavy loads. Moreover, a longer wheelbase provides more comfort for the driver as the captain's chair positions shift from over the front axle to between the axles. Currently, some drivers may argue that COE trucks offer superior visibility but it seems that's not enough to convince drivers or fleet owners to invest in them. In addition to stability on highways, a long-nosed truck with a longer wheelbase and a sturdy structure will be better suited for rough terrain. When considering construction purposes, a sturdier truck is always the best choice. How impressive has Tesla been in building an all-electric truck so far? The era of self-driving cars being merely a science fiction concept is long gone. Thanks to companies like Tesla Motors, the once far-fetched dream of driving an autonomous vehicle is gradually becoming a reality. Tesla Semi boasts a maximum operating range of 500 miles, with maximum towing weight included, and a constant speed of 60 miles an hour. It also boasts an impressive drag coefficient, making it more aerodynamically efficient than the Bugatti Chiron supercar and conventional diesel trucks.
With its completely flat floor design and a pair of adjustable flaps on the side that can automatically adjust to the shape of the trailer being towed, it flattens the gap between the cabin and the trailer hitch point. In Tesla's plan, the company aims to build nine truck charging stations along the 1,800-mile long route from California to Texas, which will be the deciding factor in efficiency and feasibility of transitioning to this all-electric vehicle. The infrastructure promises to help reduce fuel costs by an impressive 23% compared to traditional diesel cab over trucks. Furthermore, evaluating the efficiency of Tesla's electric trucks doesn't just stop at efforts to reduce carbon emissions. It also significantly contributes to cost savings for businesses compared to traditional diesel trucks. Even Tesla itself is committed to savings, with promises of saving up to $200,000 in the first three years with its semi-model. However, Mercedes-Benz has rolled out its own electric truck lineup to follow in the footsteps of the Tesla Semi into the market. According to the automaker, Mercedes has unveiled the e-Actro 600, a direct competitor of the electric truck and Tesla Semi, with a range of 300 miles per charge while carrying 35,000 pounds of cargo. Meanwhile, the Semi boasts superior capacity with 48,000 pounds of cargo hauling capability. Let's dive straight into the stats, because of course, that's why you're here. Mercedes has utilized three separate lithium iron phosphate battery packs to deliver a total output of 621 kilowatt hours. Sounds hefty, but it still falls short of the 800 kilowatt hour unit in the long range Tesla Semi, which can travel up to 500 miles. More notably, this new model falls into the cab over category with a motor located beneath the cabin, which certainly seems out of step with the preference of truck drivers in the US. The front of the E-Actros is equipped with an additional airfoil above the cab, helping the truck achieve 9% better aerodynamics than the Actros MP3 diesel cabin, which sits at 0.47 CD. This makes it challenging for it to outperform the Tesla Semi with the best aerodynamics in today's truck market. What Daimler calls predictive powertrain control uses data from satellite positioning and cameras to automatically adjust the output and transmission of the powertrain for the most efficient operation. Two optional power cutoff systems have been developed for trucks. One allows operation for hydraulic or mechanical equipment such as tipping, sliding floors, or silo trailers. The AC power cutoff system features a frequency converter that converts direct current from a high voltage power grid into alternating current to operate refrigerated containers on trailers. The Tesla Semi will accept charging rates of up to 750 kilowatt hours from Tesla's special mega charger meaning a 1,000 kilowatt hour battery can be replenished from nearly empty to 80% in 30 minutes and fully charged in 90 minutes. On the other hand, the e 600 will only accept charging rates of up to 400 kilowatts. The battery of the e 600 can be boosted from 20 to 80% in 30 minutes if this model uses the MCS charging port. Daimler stated that they'll manufacture and release it to the market by the end of 2024. Meanwhile, PepsiCo has received its first large rigs, and Frito-Lay, the snack food division of the beverage and snack food conglomerate, will play a central role in the company's Tesla truck deployment plan at its Modesto, California plant distribution center. Although Tesla is known for keeping secrets about sharing its vehicle specifications, they eventually could gather some detailed information from Tesla designers in interviews. Additionally, some important details have been disclosed by the company's drivers the Tesla Semi's powertrain is the best place to start. According to a Tesla spokesperson trained in communication, boasting three times the power output of a conventional diesel pickup truck, the electric Tesla Semi efficiently utilizes the tri-motor powertrain from the modified Model S Plaid spinning backward. The front motor of the Model S drives the Semi's rear axle, acting as a drive unit on the highway, while the dual rear motors of the Plaid are mounted on the Semi's mid-axle, these motors feature a clutch similar to Rivian's, allowing them to be used for acceleration and decoupling at speed to improve efficiency. Considered the best-selling truck in the US, the Freightliner Cascadia has a power output of 350 horsepower in its basic form, and that triple figure is 1,050. We are quite confident in saying that the Semi matches the 1,020 horsepower of the Model S and Model X Plaid, and it can even match its 1,050 pound-foot of torque. An interesting aspect is that four Tesla chargers are positioned in a way that the driver must detach the trailer and plug it into the charger of each set, located near the driver's side just in front of the mid-axle. Press into the port and it'll automatically open or close the motor, while the charging cable is thicker than a soda can and easier to manage than the DC fast charging cable you'd find at a typical Electrify America station. 
When pulling the electric door handles on both sides of the truck, the rear door opens to reveal a staircase similar to a bus. Climb up and into the semi's cabin, and you'll find, as our photographer put it, more empty space. A space about 3 by 7 feet with a subway-like rubber floor. Tesla fabric lining the walls, a jump seat on the right side, and ample headroom for a 6-foot tall person to walk around and stretch. However, notably absent is dedicated software for Frito-Lay drivers, such as what Rivian provides for Amazon drivers in the EDV Prime truck or what Brightdrop offers on the Zevo 600 for FedEx drivers. Instead, drivers use their Tesla app on their phones as a key and rely on the mobile tablet provided by PepsiCo stored in the storage compartment on the right side of the cabin, alongside two wireless chargers, a cup holder, and switches to alert of hazards. While the material quality and construction are typical of Tesla, the allure of the Tesla Semi running electric cannot be entirely denied once this manufacturer can expand production lines for this electric truck model. Ultimately, it's all worth exploring the differences between truck types and the necessary infrastructure that needs to be built. Is it possible for cab over trucks to return to the US market? And what does Tesla need to do to overcome the challenges of electric trucks? We appreciate your contributions and hope this video brought you relaxation. If it did, Please support us by hitting the like button and becoming a part of the Tesla Car World family through subscribing to our channel. Don't miss out on our awesome content by enabling the bell icon. Your feedback and time are highly valued. Thank you for watching, and we'll be back soon. Stay safe and enjoy life.